Hello everybody out there in Floss Tube World. This is Vicki, AKA the Virginia Stitcher, coming to you with my whip, mid-year whip parade for 2023. Um, I started my videos off in 2021, in May of 2021 with a whip parade. And usually, and then last year I did a whip parade in May. Um, so I'm a little late this year getting a whip parade in. And I thought I would go ahead and do my mid-year whip parade since I'm gonna be busy most of the rest of the summer. Like if you've seen my previous video, I was explaining I'll be on travel a lot. And so I thought, let me get a, a whip parade in here to show you guys what I've been up to. So let me see which side my, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I kind of, I never know which side my um, camera is on my, I'm filming on my iPad. So as you can see, I, I am in my craft room, but I am on the small sofa that's in the corner of my craft room. We moved this in here um, when we were doing flooring and everything. So now I have a couch in here and I thought I'd film from here and just stack all of my, well, not all of them, this is half. So this is part one and um, of my whip parade. And so I have stacked a whole bunch of my projects here. In fact, that's what I was trying to move. I was sitting on them because they're sliding down off their stack over here. And then I have a stack over here. So without much further ado, um, oh, I will tell you too that I went ahead and I did, um, I probably UFO'd or put on the back burner a handful of projects. And I might not show you some of the ones that were like ancient whips that I have not been touching. So um, those, I call them my string B players. I'm not ready to completely give up on them, but they're not something that I think I'm gonna be reaching for anytime soon, and I have not. So um, they're sitting on the bench waiting to, to play. So um, they may come out to play at some point, um, but uh, for the meantime, they're sitting on the bench. But I will show you everything else I have. So let me go ahead and get started so this video isn't three hours long. Um, I will just grab off of the stack. This is a So Much To Love bag that has coffee cups on it. Oh, okay, this is one of my long dogs that I have going. I probably won't take a lot of these out of the plastic. Hopefully they won't glare too badly um, because if I take everything in and out of the plastic, that's even gonna take longer. So this one is my Do Different by Long Dog Samplers. And I did not get too far on this one. Um, I am stitching this on a piece of Taupe Lugana 32 count and I am stitching it with a brown DMC. I am stitching it with DMC 838. So I just have several skeins of 838 in the bag. So they're ready to go for this one. So it's kind of a brown on brown uh, idea on this one. And I showed this to, the last time I showed this to you guys, I have not done any more progress on this one, but this is where this uh, project is. So that's how far I am on this whip. Not very far at all. That's really a start. I think I started this and worked on it one or two days. And that is how far I am on this one. So there's still quite a bit more to go. I just have the very first little triangle thingy here, way up in this corner. So I have a whole lot more um, to do on this one. So whenever, um, I feel like working on a long dog, I do have this one. So I'm going to try to fold this back up quickly and put it back in its project bag. And then I'm going to be tossing them aside and see if I can get, um, figure a place to put all these. I'll probably toss them to one side and then have to toss to the other side once that side of the couch gets empty next to me. Um, the next one, let's grab, oh my goodness, I've got an avalanche over here. <clears throat> this next one I showed to you not too long ago. This one is by Rosewood Manor. It's called A Tisket, A Tasket. Um, I started this with um, Pam Dumont. She's stitching in the land of good enough. She owns a Stitch New England up in um, Rhode Island, I think it is. Oh, wait a minute. Attleboro, Massachusetts, or something like that. North Attleboro, Massachusetts. So if you're ever in that vicinity, uh, you can check her shop out. But she started this, it was called the Tisket Tasket Basket Sal. 
And of course, my cells are really start alongs, not stitch alongs. Some people have finished, some have not, and I definitely have not. So I'm using all of the called for threads. They're Weeks Dye Works, I believe, all of them. So here's my called for threads. I'm using all of those, and I'm stitching this on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color, I'm not sure what color this is. It's kind of a sand color. I'll just fold it in half. I've only stitched on it a few days, so not much, not any more progress than the last time I showed it to you. This was one of my Mania whips, and because I had started it the previous May, I think it was a May 1st start of 2021, or 2022, I'm sorry. And so I um, came in and I did a little bit more of this past May for my mania. Worked on it another day, um, but that is, it's probably only got about three days of stitching on it. A lot of color changes in this one, even though the cut colors are very similar in, um, there are a lot of grays and kind of bluey grays in this one. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of color changes, but there are. All right, let me get this one out of my way. This one is one of my, um, and I'm not, I'm been not showing you my bags. This one is, uh, Lake House Stitch Company bag. It's a vinyl fronted. Love the colors. These are my, this is, these colors are my jam right here. Pur these pretty purples and blues, teals. And then this one is, uh, I think this is a dot dot goose bag. And then it has Paris on it and Eiffel Tower Paris fabric on the inside. And I think this might be usually labeled if it's a, it doesn't have a Lake House Stitch Company label on it and it doesn't have a dot dot goose. So I don't know who I got it from. Had it for a little while, but this is one of my full coverage pieces and I have not touched this one in a while either. You know, when I was looking through um, what I've stitched on and what I haven't, there's like quite a few I have not touched in a while. This is one of them. This is um, by uh, Heaven and Earth Designs, charted by them. It's artwork by Leonid Avramov. It's called Bonded by the Rain. And this one is the, I don't remember what, what version this one is. Because sometimes they'll have a mini. I, don't, I know this isn't a mini. I think this is just a regular one. It's not, uh, and I'm just stitching this one on a 16 count Ada. Uh, white Ada, just plain white Ada that I picked up at probably Hobby Lobby. Um, and I'm stitching this using my, I, I started this one a while back and I was, and I had it on a gridded fabric and I was trying to stitch it by a paper chart and I was having such a hard time keeping up. And then I got Pattern Keeper and so I had to, I restarted it on Pattern Keeper. And that's how far I am, not very far. Just a corner, upper uh, left-hand corner start. So not much to look at there. I know these um, full coverage pieces can look kind of boring until you get, you know, something that looks like something. <laughs> like look like a tree or a lamp or a person or a dog, something. But um, right now it's just this splotch of colors up here in the corner. So it doesn't really look like much. So, but I love the artwork by Leonid Abramov. Um, uh, what's her name? Shiloh, um, what is she? Stitch MD on floss tube. She, um, stitched one of them. Um, this is bonded by the rain. I think, she, I can't remember which one she did. She did a bigger one. I think this one, this is a, oh, so much to love bag. You can get these off of Etsy. All of these bags, I think, so far have been off of Etsy. Um, this is another Heaven and Earth design, and this one is by um, Andy Russell, and it's called Hidden Harbor. It looks like this. It just looks like such a cool place to be, a fictional place. It'd be so neat to go to, <laughs> um, kind of fantasy world. And this is on a 16 count white Ada also, same, same type of fabric. Um, because if they're full coverage, you're not gonna see the material. And even though it starts out stiff, it does um, soften up as you work on it. And I do have a big piece. Like I said, it's one of those ones that comes in the big tube that they used to sell at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby has, seems to have kind of 
gotten smaller in the, what they carry uh, for cross stitch. But that's where I am. I'm just in the upper left hand corner of the sky. Not very far. But still, that's probably well over 200, two, that's probably 2,000 stitches. Stitched on it in probably a couple, two or three days. And then just got that far. And all it is is this little bit of like purpley blue sky way up in the top, up there. So, not too far on that one. Hope I'm not going too fast. I don't want to go too fast or too slow. And of course, on these um, full coverage pieces, I'm using the called for DMCs. I do not, I'm not brave enough to try to rechart the coloring on a heaven and earth design piece. So I leave them just as they are. Leave it to the professionals to, to chart those. Um, let's see. This one I showed to you not too long ago because this was another mania piece. This is another Lake House Stitch Company bag. And um, looks like this. And then the inside has pumpkins. It's vinyl fronted. This one is uh, by Ink Circles. And it's um, called Cirque de Caro. Just so, showed it to you not that long ago because I was working on this for Mania. And then I worked on it again another day uh, in uh, June, I believe, just last month. So I recently had showed you um, <clears throat> a little bit of progress on this, but not much. But I will show it again. This is on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Tycho, T-Y-C-H-O. This is a soft Ada. It's an overdyed Ada. It's, it's by Picture This Plus. Make sure I'm showing you the right side. And this is how far I am on this piece. Originally, uh, when I picked it up from Mania, I had a, a full page finished. So it was this completed rect rectangle look. And then I came in and did all those stitches that kind of hang over off the rectangle. And that's it. That's only how far I got. Not very far on that one either. I think this one is about six or eight pages for the whole thing. So I only have like a page, over a page done on this one. Not too far on this one. And the color of floss I am using is by Silks For You. And it is PR094. And uh, they're an Australian dyer. And I can show you the card in case you're interested. Silks For You. Find on Etsy and at her shop, Silks, silks For You. Looks like .net AU. Um, but my, uh, the PR094 looks like this. And then I think I saw somebody, and I haven't been able to get back and answer comments, was asking how I use my overdyed, um, what lengths I use. I use this length. I use two pieces. I thread two pieces into the needle. I do not do the loop start because I want all the purple on one end, all the blue on another end. So I don't want to mix my two colors together when I'm stitching with it. I want it to stay the true varig variegation. And um, this, so this is probably about maybe an 18 inch length. And this is half of the hank. What I did was that hank will come to you in a big loop, a big, huge loop. It's kind of all twisted and together. I untwisted it and then I just chopped the loop in half. And this is half of the hank. So, or what's left of half of the hank after I've been working on it some. <clears throat> and then I keep it, I reason I'm using this project, this little bag came with that dot dot goose bag to match. So I just keep my silk thread in there. Um, I have another one where I'm using some of the silk thread and I have it on a floss drop. Or part of the hank on a floss drop. So that is my Cirque de Caro. And um, loving it. Just, um, so those are some of my, my bigger pieces. This is another bigger, mono, almost monochromatic piece. This is in a bag I made using Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, her tutorial for project bags. It's just some fabric. I think I got it from Joann's. It's nothing fancy schmancy. And this is um, by Modern Folk Embroidery. This is their um, Stitch Along for 2021, Fruits of Plenty. Obviously, I did not do the stitch along. I didn't even sign up for the stitch along till I think July of 2021. 
So I started this a couple of years ago, but I'm not that very far. I started with the January block and I've been working on the February block. Um, I am stitching this just on a, a piece of off-white Ada. And I picked two DMC colors for this one. I should tell you what they are. I can't remember what color this is, but it's just like a very light, it might be lamb's wool Ada uh, for this one. Got a big piece because I'm gonna need it. This is a large project and that's how far I am. So like I said, I'm using two different colors of Ada. I did start this with a purple variegated DMC and then I decided that the lighter purple was just kind of fading into my, I had white fabric uh, and I wasn't caring for it. And I thought, let me switch it to the teal. And so the two colors that I am using in this one are just DMCs. I went, I looked at my DMC chart and I picked two that I thought would coordinate very well together. So I'm using 3808 for the darker of the two teals. And I am using, this is 597 for the lighter. So I have two um, kind of blue teal colors. <clears throat> I always know that's what's in this project bag because that's kind of the colors of the project bag. Match the thread, match the, the, the uh, piece for this one. So that is one of my other really large projects that um, doesn't have a whole lot on it yet. But every now and then when I feel like working on, you know, a big um, piece like that, I'll pull that one out. This is another bag I made using Elizabeth Ankin Stitch. All my bags are using that same tutorial. If I say I made it, I used Elizabeth Ankin Stitch, her tutorial she put out um, maybe a couple of years ago. And this one is, this is my other long dog sampler, another long dog I have going. Wait a minute, why is that? Hold on. It's like I stuck it in the plastic bag for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, this is Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. Keep, keep you guys in mystery is what I'm talking about here. Here is the... I know you've probably seen it more than likely. A lot of people have stitched it or are stitching it. In fact, I was just watching Stitchy Sarah, not Stitchy Sarah, um, Sarah's Stitchy Spot. And she's been stitching on this one and she's gotten quite far. Is this it? That is the main, I don't know what I did with the cover sheet for this one. This is one that I, I had to print off. Oh, here we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. And like I said, Sarah, Stitchy Spot Sarah, she has a lot of this done. She's got like a good chunk. And I, I started it, um, no, this is the one I started with Purple Thread. Not, not the Fruits of Plenty. This one is. And then I changed my mind because I did not like the way the purple thread was um, showing up on my white fabric. So I switched to a 16 count piece of Ada in the color Old Stationery, Old Stationery by Seraphim Fabrics. And I um, switched to another Silks For You. And this one, I like I said, is on a floss drop. And this one is PR181. This one goes from kind of, um, almost like all of the metallic colors, like like a metal gray to a copper to a gold kind of color. Very pretty. And on this old stationery, um, this old stationery is kind of a old tannish looking kind of fabric. And this is how far I am on my restart of pandemic. It's not very far at all. Because you know what one of my problems is with this one? I'm sorry, this is not on a 16 count Ada. This is on an 18 count Ada. And usually I stitch on, if I'm stitching on Ada, I stitch on 16 count. Double that over. And so my problem with this one is I switched it to the 18 count. And on 18 count, 
The problem I have with 18 count is two threads are too bulky. One thread seems too thin. So I tried it with two threads. I tried it with one thread. I just finally decided that I would do it with just one thread of silk because the silk seems a little bit thicker than DMC. Not much, but maybe just a tiny bit. So I figured the coverage is good enough, but my problem is I have picked it up twice now to stitch on it and have stitched started off with two threads because I stitch almost always with two threads. And so I've had to rip stitches out of this thing twice <laughs> and I get frustrated and I put it away. <clears throat> and I contemplated restarting this again because I keep doing that. And I, I, I told myself, Vicki, surely you'll remember eventually that this is a one thread piece. I think I even wrote myself a note, one strand in, in exclamation point, exclamation point. So I, you know, won't do that. But if I don't pick up my note, if I just pick up this and my thread and I just start stitching, because that's what I did the last time. I had the note in there and I still stitched it with two threads to start. I had to rip it. And I was probably stitching on this for because I thought, wow, the colors look brighter. Why does the colors look brighter? And I even re-looked at my thread. I thought maybe that strand, those strands are darker than these strands. And I kept looking at it and I thought, no, looks the same, looks okay. And um, dummy me, I kept stitching away for probably eight hours, six, eight hours on the thing, probably stitched on a day and a half before I figured out I was stitching with two threads instead of one. And I thought, no wonder. So then I had to sit there and spend another two, three hours pulling out everything I stitched into it. So, and then I put it in timeout. I was mad at it. So, well, I'm mad at myself. Can't be mad at an inanimate object. It's not its fault. It's me, but I was frustrated with it. So I said, I'm not gonna stitch on that anymore this week and I haven't touched it since. So my last long dog sampler that I have, all three of these are kind of, I just grabbed half of my bins on my uh, whip wall that you've seen in my videos and um, grabbed all of the projects out of them. And I, and I have them kind of categorized in the bins. So all of my long dogs are kind of together. They're all together. And I only ha I have three. The last long dog that I have going is Hoity Toity. Looks like this. And I, I am using DMCs, but I did switch out. I'm pretty sure I'm using all DMC. I did switch out. Yes, they're DMCs, but I did switch out a couple of the colors. I think I wanted a little more of the pink in there instead of orange. And instead of the black, I'm using um, 823, DMC 823 instead of 310 for the black parts. So they're actually like a really dark navy blue. This one's being stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color lamb's wool. And I, and I picked this up for Mania because this was a May uh, start a couple of years ago. That's only how far I am because this has a whole bunch of color changes. So what I do, how I'm tackling this border, especially this border, um, I'll go in and I'll, kind of stitch some of the elements and then I fill it in with the dark blue. Stitch some of the elements and fill it in with the dark blue. That's what I usually am trying to do, but so you see over here where I've stitched the blue and now I gotta, I gotta put the elements in. And like just something like this right here is like three or four different colors. There's two different colors here, a different color here, a different color there, a different color there. So it's a lot of color changes, but it's gonna look beautiful when it's done. So this is my hoity-toity. Um, somebody who has finished it is um, Lisa Kindred Stitcher on Flace, um, Floss Tube. She finished it, I don't know, earlier this year maybe, maybe back in February or something. I don't remember exactly when. And hers looks just gorgeous. So I know it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. And there's not a whole lot of colors. There's maybe, 15 colors, 15, 16 colors, but they just switch them around. They're just switched around so much through the piece that um, it's a lot of color changing. And so one of the beauties of having a bunch of whips um, for me is that when I get, I'll work on a piece that I have to switch colors a whole lot, um, like this one or um, 
you know, the Tisket Tasket by Rosewood Manor. And then when I get um, tired of switching colors so much, I'll work on something that has some fill in, or at least chunks of color, chunks of one color, so that I get a kind of a break of, you know, feeling like I'm re-threading my needle every 10 stitches. So, um, uh, let's see. Oh, this was a, this was a dot dot goose bag. This one with the sunflowers and the, the yellow polka dot. And then this one's a Lake House Stitch Company bag with cherries. This one is um, one I started with Lindsay from Blushing Pink Stitches. We started this one a while back. I know Lindsay's got a little bit more done on hers than mine, than I have done. But this is Forever and Ever by Cottage Garden Samplings. It's from their Songbird series. And uh, I had seen Lori Shikalone from Once Upon a Stitch. That's her floss food channel. She finished this one and it was just absolutely gorgeous. I was watching her stitch on this one. I, I followed her along as she was stitching and thought, how beautiful is this piece? And um, so I got it and then Lindsay saw that I had it and she said, would you like to start it together? So we started a hashtag song, songbird sal back on June 1st of 2022, last June. Yeah. <clears throat> and I haven't touched it since last June. Um, I've been bad. Sorry, Lindsay, if you're watching this. I'm just, I have not fit it back into my rotation. I am stitching this one on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color Springfield Sage. And I'm using the DMC conversion, the DMCs, and she is using the overdyes. If you want to see somebody who's doing it with the overdyed threads, Check out Blushing Pink Stitches. And this is how far I am. So I'm just working on that, that kind of whitish, green, white uh, flower up in the corner right here. It's kind of a, a green, kind of white but green, really, flower. And I can't wait to do the cardinals too. Those cardinals are handsome, handsome and pretty. So that's where I am on this songbird sow. And uh, I do plan on picking this one up. This to me seems like a spring, you know, springy, summery stitch. Definitely spring. So it's, it's gonna take me a little while because I wanna get everything back in the bags. We have 60 projects or however many, there's 60-ish projects sitting here. It's, it would be a complete disaster <laughs> if I didn't put everything back. Um, so my plan was to get some more stitching done on that one soon. One that I have worked on just recently and I just showed it to you guys that not, not that long ago and I'm getting ready to go on a, a little retreat in a, in a few days, um, up to the mountains here, a couple hours away. I get together with about 10 ladies, 10 friends of mine and we craft. I stitch, they, um, knit, paper craft, all, all different kind of things. And um, I think I might take this piece with me. I just recently was working on it. I just showed it to you in my last video and I have not worked on it any since then. And this is a, another bag that I made using Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, her tutorial. Like all the, the cockatoo. I think that's what you call those birds. This one's pink. Isn't it pretty? Um, I am using all of the call for DMCs for this one. This is By the Bay Needle Arts. And it is called Tidal Rivers All Scenes. Because I think there are five or six scenes to this thing. And it came out, I think, originally as a stitch along. And you could stitch one scene, two scenes, three scenes, or all of them, you know, however many you wanted. I'm doing all scenes. I am stitching it on a, um, I can't remember if this is 28 or 32 count, Lugana in the color... Uh, it's a light gray color. I think it's called Whisper. Pretty sure. <clears throat> this is one I did start on a different piece of fabric. And then I realized my margin was going to be really, really small. Real tight. I didn't even think you would be able to... I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't realize it when I started it. And so I restarted it on this fabric. And I'm going to have plenty of room. But I had showed it this one in my last video. And I, I'm not any farther than I was then. 
But here you go. This is where I am on By the Bay Needle Arts, the title Rivers. Ordered it off of her site. I just Googled um, By the Bay Needle Arts and went to her site. And it was a, a PDF download that you could print out. and have immediately to stitch. And so that's, um, this is my one and only By the Bay Needle Arts piece and I love it. Like I said, I think I wanna bring this one on my retreat. In fact, I'm gonna throw this one in a different direction <laughs> so I can have it aside. I, don't, I didn't wanna stick my things aside that I'm thinking of taking until I showed them all to you guys. Mm, I'll throw them on the dog, dog bed right there because <laughs> my dog's not on the dog bed right now. <laughs> So it's safe to throw my things down there. I have um, the, my younger dog. She loves this dog bed in here. And she'll <clears throat> hang out with me and chill. And um, um, just hang on her dog bed a lot of times. This one is by um, Sarah. This is another um, project bag that I made. Just with some uh, fabric from Joann's. I have Joann's right down the street, so it was easy for me to go there. And when I have fabric on sale, I bought some and made some project bags. Nothing super fancy. One of these days, I want to get to a quilt store, though, because I'm kind of interested in maybe starting to get back into quilting again. I haven't quilted that much, but I did try back in the day. Um, but my kids were little, and it was really hard for me to get any quilting done. This is by Sarah Garamani, and it's called Primavera, which is spring. So this is Spring Village One. This um, chart came with one of the little sheep buttons. It's a little wooden button, so I keep it in the bag with it. And it, it's just a cute little sheep button. Isn't it cute? A little pair of sheep, so to put on my, uh, on my piece somewhere when I um, get finished stitching it. This one I'm counting, stitching on uh, with all the DMC colors. And I, I remember I was doing this on this, like kind of a really drab, dark brown color. And I thought, why am I doing a spring piece on a drab, dark brown? So I switched it to a 16 count Ada in the color Jade. So it's a, a pretty bluey green color, like Jade. And, so I'm not very far because this was a restart a while back. And this is where I am. So I started out in the upper left-hand corner, started to put in the word Primavera. I got Prim. <laughs> so this is how far I am on Primavera. And I decided I wanted to, they, it does come with the conversion that you could put, um, I think it's a springtime or something. You could put the English version, um, but I decided to put the Italian, put the original, just as she originally charted it. Put my little button back in there. I don't want to lose my little button. Okay, let's do this one. So on the top of the stack, another bag I made using Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, her tutorial. It's got a uh, dog material, dog bones and dog paw prints. Um, and I have a little paw, dog paw print, little paw print um, pull tab thingy on my zipper. This one is called Dog's Declaration by Ink Circles. And it looks like this. Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Squirrels. I was just watching Candace K. And she just recently started this and she said she is loving it and can't put it down. So she's she's rocking and rolling on that one. Um, this one I um, am stitching just on a piece of antique white Ada. I mean, not Ada, um, even weave, 32 count. Pretty sure it's 32 count, might be 28 because you know, I always tell stories. 32 count Lagana in the color antique white. And um, I am using the DMCs for this. It comes with, you could either use the Valdani's or there is a DMC conversion. And I am using the DMCs, but I am subbing in a few, couple of overdyes here and there um, in the colors that look like it, but I just wanted maybe some variegation. And one of them is for the brown, for the lettering. So it looks like this. So this is how far I am on Dog's Declaration. 
by Ink Circles. Hopefully I can't see what you guys see. Oh yeah, I've got it all in there. So my brown is a variegated, I, I picked out Brown Bear by, I don't remember if it's Gentle Arts or Classic Color Works. So there's a little bit of variegation in the brown bay, in the brown here for the lettering. So I've got Life and Liberty. So I just need, and the Pursuit of Squirrels. And I got a couple of dogs in here, stitched in. Big red dog over here. My girls used to have a DVD that was given to them by, um, my um their dad's grandma when they were little it was called Clifford the big red dog that they sometimes watched and that's what I think of when I see that big red dog I think Clifford the big red dog um so love this piece I saw it at in stitches in Alexandria and it was stitched up it was a model stitched up hanging by their front door and um I had to find it and they will number their models and then you go to these bins that are in numerical order and you can find if they have the chart. So this was model number 1166 on their walls. And I went and found it and uh, purchased this one. After seeing it stitched up, it was just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully the zippers aren't bugging you guys too much. All right, what's the next one up here? This is a So Much To Love bag that I purchased off of Etsy. And this one has, oh, this is a Teresa Kogut. <clears throat> this one has not been stitched on in a while, and I know because I got mad at it. This is um, Newcastle Bouquet. I love it. I still want to stitch it, but I got mad at it, put it aside, was stitching on a bunch of other things and haven't gotten back to it. I got mad at it because I was stitching along and I was doing quite well. And then um, I got down to the bird here and I was stitching in his breast and I somehow miscounted somewhere. So I think I need to just frog out the bird or, or look at it closely. And I just was like, eh, I didn't feel like it at the moment. And um, I got uh, where I was like, eh. I'm just gonna set him aside and I just haven't picked it back up. But I do want to, it's on my radar. I've been thinking about this one a lot. So I do wanna pick it back up soon. These are the colors. I'm using the called for colors for this one. So she does, um, Teresa Kogut does use a blend usually of DMCs and then some overdides. So um, I have those and I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count Lagana in the color wheat. Wheat or taupe. So I have my, sorry for the noise. That was my, uh, here we go. I stuck the sticker on my bag here. Yes, it is wheat. I'm just second guessing myself. Um, I love it. I love the fabric. I love the colors. I love everything about it. I still want to stitch it. It's not, it's not put in time out forever. Um, Sometimes when I have a big boo-boo, I have to set things aside. But that's where I am on this piece. Love it. So my birdie, I'm gonna have to come in and I'm gonna, I thought, well, maybe I'll just flub him. And what it was is I was working on it at my Ocean City retreat, probably last year. And I was stitching along, I got started on it. I was stitching, did all this. And I thought, let me come down and get the bird in. You know to have a break because what I'm gonna do is some of the border some of the inside some of the border some of the inside because when I have a repetitive border and there's a lot of repeat in the border I like to break it up so I came down and I did the ABC's in here and then somewhere I messed up on the bird because I thought I'll come down I'll do the bird then I can get into the flowers and the basket but keep coming back and forth you know from border to inside the big inside motif so I need, and I didn't feel like sitting there trying to figure it out. So I put it in my project bag and brought it home and then it's been sitting <laughs> and hasn't been picked up. So I need to take a minute and look at it and figure it out and then either frog out what I've made a mistake on, on it, where the mistake is, or um, see if I could flub the mistake. Cause I think one of the other ladies was like, can you work around your mistake? And I thought, eh, I don't know. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. 
because if it's going to cause me to have, because I thought maybe I would, and I kept stitching for a little while, and I thought, I don't know, because if the bird's off, then I've got to keep remembering that the bird is off, and I don't want to throw other things off, and then have things, when I get down to the border down here, maybe these flowers aren't fitting, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought, is it easier to go ahead and take the bird out now before I get too much farther? So that's my dilemma with that one. So I gotta look at it closer. Once I look at it and I gauge where my mistake was and how bad the mistake is, then I'll decide if I'm gonna frog or continue the stitch and I go from there. And this is another So Much To Love bag. This one has one of my newer projects that I've just started recently. Yes, this is one of my Brenda Keys. Um, she's the sampler company. And this one uh, was inspired by Heidi from Stitching Fay on Floss Tube. She has almost got this one finished. And this is called Sweet Humility Sampler. And I love a house, a good house, and this has a beautiful house on it. Of course, I'm not to the house yet, but I'm trying to work my way that way. I am stitching this with all the called for DMCs, and I'm pretty sure these are all DMCs. Yep, they're all DMCs. She gives you in your pack, and I went ahead and used it, she'll give you just a, um, kind of like a thicker paper, that has um, the holes punched and it says it's a thread organizer. She'll give it to you for your piece. So I just wrote and put the symbols, wrote the DMC number and put the symbols for each of these. And then when I put them in my project bag, I just kind of wrap them around. Uh, so that hopefully they don't get too, they don't get tangled, which they usually don't. And then this one is being stitched on. <laughs> What is this being stitched on? 32 Count Lagana in the color Terrific by um, Fortnite Fabrics. This color is a very light, very light kind of like key lime green. And I did a bottom start because I really did want to work up to the house. And I thought it looked like it would be fun to work from the bottom up. So that's where I am on this one. So I was working my, I, I did the border along the bottom, you know, just the basics of the border. Um, and then I did the tree and I was trying to work my way up because the house sits up here. So, um, cause I've got the start of the little girl, that's her dress. And then there's, it's like a pathway with trees that goes along the side that leads up to the house. So I have this tree and this little girl and there's a pathway that goes, you know, she, so as I do that on the way up, I could get up to that house and stitch that in the main part. But for some reason, the colors in this picture look greener. Um, mine look more yellow. I know I'm stitching it on a green. Mine look kind of yellow and gray. Like this tree looked greener in the picture. So I was kind of like, hmm. Not sure about the colors on this one. But that was my, my start on that one. And let me stick it all back in here. Um, if you haven't checked out Stitching Faye, she just put up a new video. Just a new one recently. She finishes so much stuff. I don't know how that... I don't know how she gets so much done, so much accomplished. She has lots of projects going and she gets lots of finishes. Um, this bag, I'm not sure where I got this one. It was off of Etsy, but it doesn't have any kind of uh, label on it. And I did uh, get this one a while back. So I'm not sure where I got this one. This one is a sampler. This one is um, from Stitches Through the Years on um, Etsy. And it's called the Little Things Sampler. So she's got like several different angles of the picture there. And this one is being stitched on a piece of, looks like 28 count Lugana. Let me see. 
Where's my cheat sheet? Um, 28 count Lagana in the color Mushroom. And I'm using a mix of the called for and my own uh, picks. Uh, a lot of times I stitch from stash. So if I have the called fors, I use them. And then sometimes I pick things that look similar to the color that, um, that they're calling for, but maybe I don't have it, but I have something that's similar to in my stash and I'll pull it up. But this is where I am on the Little Things Sampler. And if I remember right, this is, yes, this is one over one words. So this is a case where I made a mistake, but I'm gonna leave my mistake in. Let's see. Somewhere, because it in the scheme of things, it wasn't gonna matter, and I can't even really tell now where my mistake actually was. But I'm a space off in my lettering somewhere. And one of these lines, I think I have an extra space either between the words or in the word. And I thought, and then I counted and I looked and it's not gonna bump into anything when I get over to the middle, the other side still. So I thought, nope, just leave it because I can't even tell where my mistake was. So 28 count mushroom Lugana. Uh, little things sampler. I need to stitch some more on this one. I haven't picked this one up in a little while. Who knows, maybe in the back of my head, I was a little mad at this one too. <laughs> Cause oh, I made a mistake. But I looked and the mistake's gonna be okay. It's not gonna make, it's not gonna throw everything off. So I can live with that mistake. The next one is one that I showed you recently. This one is in a bag that was made by my friend Ruth when we went to um, um, StitchCon last year. She was one of my table mates and she stitched this, uh, made a bag for everybody at the table. I'm take everything out so I could show the lovely inside fabric. So she made this vinyl bag with this beautiful fabric. It has a handle, but she doesn't sell, she says she doesn't, you know, she's not trying to sell them or anything. She just made them, you know, because she wanted to make something nice for everybody, which I thought was very, very sweet of her. This one, that what is housed in this one is by the Blue Flower and it's called the Moonlight Sampler. Looks like this. Hopefully that glare is not too bad. And I showed this just recently because I think this was one of my mania pieces. So I picked it up recently and I worked on it for a couple of days. Call this one my Goldilocks piece because it took me three tries to find the perfect piece of fabric for this one. You know, this one was too light, that one was too dark, the stitching was too small, whatever. Um, and I finally settled on this piece of Jody fabric from the Steel City Stitchers. She does not name her fabric. I picked this up at the Steel City Stitchers retreat last year and um, this is the piece I picked. So this is where I am on Moonlight Sampler. I just love the way it's looking on this fabric. And I better, because like I said, it took me three tries to find the fabric I liked for this one. So this over here is the start of the crescent moon. And um, so still got a lot to do on this one. And I think this is a 28 count Lugana, if I didn't say that already. And I think a couple of stores might sell her fabric. I'm not sure who she deals with. Um, um, I don't know if Keepsakes has some of hers. I don't know who who carries Jody's fabric, but she does some really pretty dyeing. So that was my Moonlight Sampler by the Blue Flower. Love it. And all of the beautiful colors. I am using I, a mix of the called for and ones I subbed in. I wanted a little bit brighter purples for the purple flowers in there. So I picked a couple of Victorian mottos. Um, I think there was a, maybe about three, three or four colors that I switched, but the rest are the called for. So I, um, and I scribbled it all on there. What else did I scribble? Oh, because originally on one of them, I was like, I'm gonna have to only use one strand because the, the 
coverage was too thick, but then it was too thin. I think I was trying to do an 18 count and um, piece of fabric, an 18 count Ada, and I didn't like how that was turning out. So this is not an 18 count, so I'm, I'm using two threads, but there I had to write myself a note, one thread, one, use one strand of thread and um, <laughs> I switched my mind anyway. Um, this is a Lake House Stitch Company bag. And this one has my hello from Liz Matthews, her, um, my home in the garden. And it looks like these. Oh, I hope the glare is not too, too bad. This one is a beautiful, pretty springy piece. I am doing this one on a piece of Lugana. And somebody had asked me the colors that I switched to this, switch this to. And if you're watching, because I'm having a hard time, sometimes I'm losing my comments. Um, once I look at them, it's like, I'll, I'll know I saw it somewhere and then I can't find it. But here I am on um, this piece, My Home in the Garden by Liz Matthews. Hello from Liz Matthews. And I'm using, um, my own conversion. And that was what somebody was asking me. And this is a uh, 28 count Lagana in the color um, antique white, because I wanted the bright colors to pop off of the white. Um, uh, I'm using some of the classic color works. So I've got cauldron, presidential blue, uh, vintage violet, but then I've switched and switched in some Victorian motto also. So I have faded pumpkin. I have old west for the gold. I have meadow wildflower. Um, 1820 prim red for the red in here. Ah, get out of the way. I am using uh, old rose from Victorian Motto, uh, Ghost Town Brown by Victorian Motto, Misty Sea by Victorian Motto, Blue Sea, 1812 Blue Sea by Victorian Motto, Evergreen Spruce by Victorian Motto, Holiday Mint by Victorian Motto, and Electric Blue by Victorian Motto. So very, very bright color palette. And uh, I think I wrote it all on a piece of paper in here. I can't find it right now and I don't wanna waste you guys' time looking for it. Um, the problem with Victorian Motto, somebody, they wanted to know what Victorian Mottos I switched in because they were gonna, they wanted to get the same ones. Mine were in a club pack years ago, a few years ago. Whether they dye the same ones that they dyed back then, I don't know. Um, if you can buy them individually, I don't know. Because I do know they are on Etsy. And they, um, I think they sell in, in packs. They don't sell separate individual colors. So I don't know how well you would be able to get those colors anyway. Um, this one is a So Much to Love bag. I think this has my snooty parrots in it. Am I right? Yes. Snooty Pears by Barbara Anna. I'm trying to remember what is in each bag so I don't have to zip and unzip all my bags uh, when I'm looking for something. Snooty Parrots by Barbara Anna. I started this one as one of my 12 by 12 pieces for New Year's Eve that Kia B and also Pam from Just Keep Stitching were hosting on New Year's Eve day. And I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count, 28 count Lugana in the color Buttercream by Four to Die Four to Die Four Fabrics. Buttercream. And I started on the bottom, and I'm that far. That's it. I did um, when I picked it up to work for the 12 by 12. It's where you work on 12 pieces in the 12 hours leading up to midnight from noon to midnight and you work one hour on each piece 
So I only did one hour. So I only got like a little bit in the corner started. So I did come back and work a couple of different times, putting a little bit more in there, but um, still not very, very, very far. When I pulled it up close, I can't see what you guys are seeing. So I'm hoping you guys can see. You're not just looking at a blank piece of fabric. Hopefully I'm holding it up there right. Okay, so that is where I am on that one. And I think I'm using all the call for on this one. I am not sure. Because this is something I pulled up and I, I kitted right before New Year's. So I may have stitched for pulled it all from stash or it may have already been kitted and I might have had all the called for I don't know so how about this one eeny meeny miny mo it's another so much to love bag she does have a club a monthly bag bag of the month club that she can join I don't know if she has openings or not but she sometimes does she makes a really good bag really pretty bags um this is by Bridget Gervais uh, with my needle and thread. It's called uh, Rejoice Evermore. It's one of her newer ones that came out last year. And I am stitching this one on um, 28 count Ivory Lagana. I'm using all of the called for. This was Oh, this was a New Year's Eve uh, 12 by 12 piece that I started. So I started this on New Year's Eve day also. So here's all the colors. And a 28 count piece of Ivory Lugana. So I picked this one up though and I've worked on it some more since New Year's Eve. So this was started right at the ringing of the bell for this year, for the new year. And this is how far I am on this one. Sorry about that. Let me hold it, get it. So I got that much done on this one so far. And loving it. It's a beautiful piece. And I have, so it's got a couple more of Brenda Gervais, a couple more of her new pieces like at home that people are starting. Chris, the camping stitcher, I think started it and I have that one kitted and I want to start it so bad, but I keep telling myself, finish this Brenda Gervais and then you can pull out another Brenda Gervais. But you know how me and my rules go. They don't usually work. I usually don't listen to myself. Let me see, am I using all the called for? Looks like I have a cheat sheet here. Yes, everything except for, um, I'm using Manor Red by Classic Colorworks instead of Lancaster Red. Probably because I couldn't find the Manor Red, but I had Lancaster Red available. So that is that one. Hmm. Okay, there's two in this bag. I know there's a couple of blackbirds in this bag. Pitch, pick this bag up from uh, the Still City Stitchers Retreat. They uh, last year, not this past uh, March, but last February, their first retreat that they did, and they had the Crafty U there had a pop-up shop. And this is a June Abel bag. So it uses a piece of Velcro to close it. And since this is a decent sized bag, I stuck two um, projects in here. Both are Blackbird, so I know that they are kind of both um, spring pieces of Blackbirds. And I'm pretty sure I'm using all the called for, I don't think I switched the Blackbird ones. I'm using the Blackbird uh, called for colors. I'm almost positive. This one is called Merrily Merrily We Welcome Spring. And like I said, Blackbird Designs. This one's a big piece. I am doing this one on a piece of um, where's the fabric? Okay. 28 count Lugana in the color Silver Lining by Seraphim Fabrics. You know what, and I don't think I've worked on any of this one this year. I picked it up and I started it last year. The silver linings is a very light, dusty pink. Very, very light, really pretty muted pink color. 
And this is how far I am on this one. So I do the upper left hand start. And I got that far. Love it. Just haven't had a chance to pick it back up. Because I am three rows down in the alphabet. And it looks like there's six rows of alphabet. So I've got three rows started. Then I can work down to some of the motifs and work on motifs and alphabet, motifs and alphabet. I don't mind stitching alphabet, but I get bored stitching alphabet. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I'm like, all right, I'm the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm getting bored now. <laughs> So I have to switch and, and stitch a bird or something for a minute. And then the other piece I have in here is one that I started this year, and it's on 28 Count Lagoon in the color <clears throat> Wheat by To Die For Fabrics. And it's called, uh, let me show you the picture, it's Oh Joyous Day. Is this it? it? Looks like this by Blackbird. Oh Joyous Day. Been a bunch of people doing uh, stitch alongs for this one, so I've seen some people working on this. In fact, I think Sarah from Sarah Stitchy Spot, she was working on this one. So this is Wheat by To Die For Fabrics, Lugana. And that's how far I am on this one. I didn't do the top border because that's satin stitches. I'm waiting on that. But um, I'm gonna take that back. I might have switched the color for this pair because the pair that was called for in my stash was a very bright in your face, like apple green. And I didn't want it that bright because it's not that bright of a color in the design for the pair up there. So I was like, ho, 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 wait a minute, that doesn't look right. So I, uh, cause I double checked the number and I was like, nope, that is the color it's calling for, but that doesn't look like anything like the color on the, the design, so, on the picture. Oh, let me do this blue flower. Here's another blue flower. This one's a Lake House Stitch Company bag. So it's gingham, gingham on the back and then it has um, pretty spring flowers on the front. It's a vinyl bag, so. You can see all the pretty flowers. So I thought my uh, blue flower Huckleberry Farm would look nice in this bag. And that's Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. Amy from Amy Loves Toads has finished this one, but she personalized it, but she finished this, oh gosh, probably at least a year ago. So it's um, back on her, if you go back in her videos, you might see it. It looks like I'm switching in a few gentle arts for some of the Weeks Dye Works, because she's calling for DMC and Weeks Dye Works and a couple of Gentle Arts, but I switched out a couple of colors. Well, about four. Um, a lot of times I'm stitching from stash, plus I'm doing a totally different color than what the call for is. I know at the time when this came out, nobody could find shale. I think everybody was buying it up for this design, because this was very popular when it came out in 2020. So I'm doing mine on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Glacier by Picture This Plus. And I got across the top of this piece pretty much. So that's where I am on Huckleberry Farm. Last time I picked it up this earlier this year, um, I think it was back in March or April, I was working here and trying to get that Huckleberry branch um, some of that done. Isn't it pretty? Love it. These blue flower pieces are so pretty. Just beautiful nature pieces. So cute. Nicely done. She's good at animals. Um... The next one I think is, I think it's a Shepherd's Song by Plum Street. So I usually, I have a lot of Plum Street. I don't think I've showed you guys a Plum Street yet today. So here is a Plum Street. It is called a Shepherd's Song, looks like this. 
And I started down here in this lower left-hand corner. I wanted to put in some sheep because that is what drew me into this one. This one is on a Lugana. Looks like a taupe Lugana. Do I have the a cheat sheet or anything that tells me what this is? It looks like I'm using all the called for, but I wrote myself a note that says, I am using sweet pea in place of nature trail. I wrote myself a little note on a sticky. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. It looks like this is a piece of taupe. Lugana, it's about, oh yes, it is. Taupe, light taupe, 32 count Lugana. The sticker's still on there. And like I said, I was starting down at the bottom so I could get some sheep in. And there we go, I have two sheep. That's how far, and I put it in my sheep bag. Sheep bag by So Much to Love. I gotta remember what over here I've shown and what I haven't shown, because I'm piling it up. Maybe I should switch sides. <laughs> This one is my Love Never Fails. This one I had seen uh, Heidi from Stitching Fay finish this one a few months back. And when I saw her finish of this one, I thought, oh my gosh, I need this one. It's by Barbara Anna. It's called Love Never Fails. I'm going to stitch it like Heidi did. And I'm going to put our um, anniversary, our, our wedding date year and our initials down here on this piece. I am stitching this one on a piece 32 count Vintage Country Mocha Lugana. And I am using all of the called for DMCs. And I still have a hanging thread. Excuse my hanging thread. Move it to the side a little bit because I was filling in on her skirt. But that's how far I am on Love Never Fails by Barbara Anna. My husband and I, our 10th anniversary will be next year. So I'd like to have it finished for then. We'll see, because I love this piece. Hmm. This might be a contender to take with me to my uh, retreat in a couple of days. Mm, in a few days. Yeah, I'm gonna throw this one to the side. But I'd like to get a little bit more done on this one. I enjoy this one. I think it's such a pretty folk artsy piece. Um, this one and like a lot of Teresa Kogut's very, seem very folks artsy to me and I seem to be drawn to folks artsy. In fact, this one right here I know is a Teresa Kogut. Um, this uh, bag though is by So Much to Love, but it's a Teresa Kogut fa fabric, her bird fabric. And so I put a bird piece by Teresa Kogut in here. And this is one I started recently, not too long ago, and this one is called Nature by Teresa Kogut. She came out with this one just recently mar at market. And I wanted to do that funky bird and I did. And I am stitching this on a 32 count piece of Lugana in the color cream. So it's just a plain cream Lugana. And I did a top left hand start. <clears throat> and I got, let me try to make it pretty, that four. Isn't he adorable? I love him. <laughs> he, she, whatever is precious. So I finished the bird, one of the birds. There's two birds up here. So I finished this one. And then there's a bunch of birds down at the bottom too. And I love the saying on it. It says, nature purifies the soul and brings peace to the heart from which love flows like a river. I love nature. I don't like to be, I don't like bug bites and all of that stuff. And I don't like to be out there when it's steaming hot like it is right now. 
here in July with the humidity and everything, but I do love nature. And when the weather is gorgeous, I don't mind getting out in nature. Pretty, pretty. So, hmm. Hmm. I don't know if I start setting aside. I'm going to have too many set aside. I only can take a few. Ugh. <gasps> set it aside to take or... <sighs> There's so many I want to stitch on. This one is a fairly recent start. This isn't a bag that I made myself. Again, Elizabeth Ann can stitch her tutorial. Um, Mary Ann Cop, 1839 by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. This is one of her new releases. So like I said, I have this Brenda Gervais and I have the um, um, Rejoice Evermore. So I was like, do I need to start another one? <laughs> I want to start another one. I have it kitted. Um, this one is being stitched on 28 count Lugana and the uh, by Be Stitch Me. Um, not another sampler is what it's called. Picked this fabric up at Salty Yarns when I was in Ocean City and I started it there back in April while I was there in Ocean City for my retreat. And I go back in September. That's the plan anyway. Um, so I got it started there and worked a little bit more when I got home. But I kitted it and started it at um, Salty Yarn. So I did all the called for over dyed threads and not another sampler uh, 28 count Lugana. And um, the New Hampshire stitcher, she started this one just recently and has shown her start on this one. And I'm sure she'll fly past me. <laughs> She's, she gets a lot of beautiful stitching done. She really does. All these wonderful stitchers on floss tube. They keep me company while I stitch. I hope, um, I hope you guys are having some fun stitching time while you're watching me do this. Do my whip parade. I hope I'm not boring you too much because we are already over an hour into this video. And I don't know if I'm quite done, half done yet. Oh my goodness. Okay, this next one is a dot dot goose bag. This one is from Stitches Through the Years and it's called Like a Cherry Blossom. This one I'm struggling with. This one might be sitting to the side for a little while. Um, that's what it looks like. It's not that I have a problem with the, the design. The design is charted well. It's a really pretty piece. My problem is, is I'm having a little bit trouble with the fabric. I'm stitching it on a 28 count piece of Lugana in the color Twilight by Picture This Plus. And it's a little bit of a darker modeled piece of fabric because I wanted my cherry blossoms to pop off of this fabric. So I have picked it up a couple of times in the past year and not gotten much done on it. And I think it's because it's a little harder for me to see on this fabric, like to stitch. I can see this really well. I love how the cherry blossoms are looking on here. And I think it's gonna be gorgeous when I'm done. So I don't know if I just need to keep trying to plug away, just do a little bit at a time on it. Because I really think the last time I picked this up, I might have just did like this cherry blossom and half of that one. And then I set it aside. I didn't get very far at all. So I'll keep trying because I love this fabric. I think it's really pretty. And I think the stitching is going to look really nice on this. But um, it's very slow stitching for me. And then my eyes get kind of tired and then I don't. Um, and I have... Very good readers I wear, and I have an Ot light by my stitchy spot. I don't try to stitch on this in the other room because the lighting isn't as bright in there. It's okay, and it works for um, material that's easier to see on, but for some reason, I, I don't know if it's the modeling on it or if it's the weave of it um, because it's a picture that's plus, which makes the hose smaller. 
the way they dye their fabric. So I don't know. I, I'm thinking it's all of all or any of the above. This is a so much to love bag, my pink flamingo bag. This one has my um, little spring in the village, Crescetta Agogo that I started, um, I think in April, I started this one. So this one is Primavera in Sita, Sitia, City. Sita, however you say that in Italian, Italian. That's how my mother says it. She goes, I'll have some Italian uh, dressing. Italian. Ah, oh, she, I love that lady. She cracks me up sometimes. I have switched in a lot of, this ring doesn't like to stay closed. I need to switch my ring because look, it just keeps falling apart. But I've switched in a lot of um, my cottage garden threads, which are brighter, variegated um, threads. So I've switched in a bunch of threads there. I'm stitching this on a piece of Lugana, 32 count Lugana in the color taupe, because I wanted to make sure that the white and light colors on this will pop and show off. And I started in the bottom left-hand corner at the flower shop, and that's how far I got. So I started this in April. This is my start. I worked a couple of days on this. And that's where I am. No more progress since the last time I showed it. I showed it in the April wrap-up, I believe it was, because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I was working on this in April because I was doing Mania in May. Or was this a Mania start? Well, maybe. I'm not sure. But <clears throat> if you want to know my conversions and you want to screenshot that and you can read that, good luck to you. But that's what, those are my conversions. That's what I switched in. <clears throat> and like I said, there are a lot of them are Cottage Garden. And I'm in the Cottage Garden Thread of the Month Club where I get five, five colors, I believe it is, a month. And it's with Garon Stitchery. Um, this next one uh, I started with, oh my gosh, I can't think of a name now always happens to me. I turn on my video, know the names, and I can't think of it. Mickey. Mickey gifted me this chart and asked me if I wanted to start it. So we started it for um, Christmas in July last year. And um, so I got a start on it. And I'm using Feldspar by Picture This Plus, 16 count Ada. Had a piece of this. And I started on the border it's not a very big piece because that's how high it is. And then it goes across, you know, to about here. It's not a real super big piece. But that's how far I got. I started on the um, the basket that the, um, the container that the Christmas tree is in and got some of this border done. I think it's going to be fun when I get over here to, um, you know, like um, Mrs. Claus, on, uh, you know, stitching on the flag, the fireplace. All of that fun stuff. Santa Claus. This tree looks like it's going to be a bear. A lot of counting. A lot of counting for all those branches. That's going to look pretty. So that's where I am on that one. And I am, I think I pulled from Stash for the colors. So I'm not using the call for. Obviously. There's all my chicken scratch. Oh yeah, there's. I wrote it. Uh, uh, Stitch along July 1st with Mickey. <laughs> On 16 count Fields Barber picture this plus. And this is just in the Amazon uh, mesh zip bag. Wait, I can't pile them on top of ones I haven't shown yet. Uh, another one of the Amazon bags. I don't have nice pretty cloth project bags for everything. I have some material to make some more though. This is from Victoria House Designs. She's a, a Ukrainian designer. And I ordered this off at Etsy a while back. And uh, this one is called uh, All We Need Is Love. 
and I was stitching it on a, a drab brown color and I didn't like how it was looking. So I restarted it on this picture of piece of Capri by Seraphim Fabrics. And so I didn't get very far when I restarted it, but this is how far I am. And I, I don't think I've picked this up at all this year yet. So there's no more progress on this one. This is a 16 count Ada. And this Capri color is really pretty. It's just, and, and I like it a lot better for this piece. The other one, it just was looking too drab on the color and I just, it wasn't working. I think it was a color I tried to dye myself in kind of a murky brown. It might work for something eventually, but not this. Um, this next one is a bag I made in that same tutorial. This is A Changed World by The Scarlet House. It looks like this. And I think I only have this top part finished. And I'm stitching this on a piece of Caramel Macchiato by Picture This Plus, 16 count Ada. Fold it up here. And that's where I am on this one. This is one where I know I made a mistake. Um, these, this um, fruit bowl, I believe is down too far. So my flowers, there's more space here in between here. So I just said, I'm gonna have to, I, I usually work on my borders as I go along. So I know, I, at least I already didn't do the border because I would have run up short on space at the end because I'm, I'm probably two or three rows off uh, lengthwise, up and down. Um, so as you can see, there's more space there between the wording and the letter, uh, the flowers, because there's more space here. And I think I was counting this word learning off of the basket. And it just, I was like, oh, something's wrong. I counted off. And so what I'm gonna just have to do this little rick rack border here, I just add like a little extra of it as I go down to have enough space because I have enough margin on my, um, I have a big enough piece of fabric to do that. But see so this basket is way closer up here to this. But this is one that I know I can fudge when I get to the bottom. See how much more space I have here? I'm two or three rows farther down there than I should be. But I had this much margin up here because I centered the piece. So I'll have plenty. I'll have that much more at the bottom. So I have enough space to make this a little bit, tiny bit longer. Um, I just have to add an extra, um, a little bit of the zigzaggy border when I go along. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if I'm using the cloth borders or not, it says DMC. I am using the call for DMC except for 817 is switched to Classic Color Works Cupid and I'm using Anchor Black instead of the DMC Black on this one. I hope that's not crinkling too much in your ear. Okay, the next one, oh, I showed this one not too, too long ago. This is a Dot Dot Goose bag. <clears throat> has roosters on it. It's a vinyl fronted bag, so sometimes my chart wants to stick to it. So this is my Dot Dot Goose bag, it has roosters. Pretty blue. This is a Gila J. By Reflet de Soie. Looks like this. And looks like I'm using all the called for DMC. These are my DMCs. Um, I know there's been a lot of people that do conversions for this one, which I've been tempted because I've seen some of the conversions and they look really nice. 
I am just, uh, this looks like a piece of fiber on a whim. Let's see if I can figure out what fabric I'm using here. No, fiber on a whim. Surprised I don't have the tag or anything. Hmm. Not sure, caramel macchiato. I'm not sure which fiber on a whim this one is. But it's a uh, piece of Lugana, and that's how far I am on this one. Because some of the colors that I'm not real wild about are like this really bright yellow. But there's not a whole lot of it, I don't think, in the piece. So I kind of was like, eh, I might just leave it if there's not a lot. So this is where I am. I don't... I got the border up here finished up to like here. So I still got to finish filling in. And then I did the leaf border down quite a ways. I want to work my way down to that pear and then the house and stuff down here at the bottom. It's hard to see because this is the antique reproduction. This is the one they reproduced from, the antique, the original. So if you can see, the material has degraded in places on this one. It's faded a lot. So this one yellow color though is the one that it's really kind of in my in, in your face. It's on um, DMC 728. So I don't know if I want to do a more mellowed yellow, mellow yellow. Um, because everything else seems fairly mellow, but that part, that color right there sticks out. <laughs> so I don't know, we'll see. So far, it's only that little bit in the piece. So I'm leaving it for now. But it's been in the back of my mind whether or not that, that it's going to stay or not. At least I haven't stitched too much of that color yet. So that is my Gilleget. 1898. Sometimes if I'm iffy on a, a fabric or my flosses or I've made a boo-boo somewhere, that kind of halts my progress for a little while on a piece. So this one hasn't gotten real far along. I'm moving along on it a little bit, but it's not one that I pick up and I work a lot. Because I, I get afraid that if I, you know, do a whole lot of stitching on it and I decide I don't like it like that, then, then I've wasted a lot of time stitching a long time on something. Put a lot of hours in. This one is the, by the Scarlet House, and this is called the Floral Motif Sampler. A lot of people are doing this. I know Brenda, uh, the sampler stitcher, has done this one. Um, Sarah from Sarah Stitchy Spot has done this one several, several people. Uh, but I am stitching this one on a piece of Wren, uh, 28 count Lugana. I picture this plus, is it 28? Yep. And I am using all the called for um, threads for this one. And I recently picked it up and worked a little bit on it. This might have been one of my mania pieces. I might have started this last May. And so this is where I am. Not a whole, whole lot done in a year, but, there, you know, there is some progress. You never know. I might get a wild here, pick it up and work on it for a long time. And get a lot done. So that is um, Floral Motif Sampler. I hope I'm holding these up long enough for you guys. Mm, I felt like I didn't hold that up too long. I'm at an hour and a half. <laughs> if I didn't have to stick these all back, and I don't have to stick them all back in the bag, but if I don't, oh my gosh, people, I would have such a time trying to figure out what threads go with which projects, et cetera, et cetera. A bag that I made using that same tutorial. 
This one is by Kathy Barrick, and this is called Nottingham. This came out a couple of years ago. One of her new pieces a couple of years ago. And I am stitching this one. I think I'm, uh, let's see. I'm stitching on a 16 count earthen picture this plus with my choice of over dyed threads. <clears throat> so <clears throat> evidently I'm stitching from stash. I picked up some of my own threads for this one. This is how far I am. I did an upper left hand start. Got that bird in. He's a big bird. And um, the little pot and um, plant planted pot he is sitting on and some of the alphabet but um I don't think I've picked this one up in a while I don't think I've picked this one up this year one good thing about doing a whip parade you can look back and see what progress you have done on some of your pieces that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing you could say man I didn't get anything done on that one either or that one or that one or that one oops Make too much noise. This one I've shown to you recently. I think this was a mania piece uh, that I had started the year before and picked up and worked a little more on. This is by the Scarlet House, and this is Isabella Jackson, 1829. Isabella Jackson, 1829. And I am stitching her. Yeah, I started her on, <clears throat> actually, I started, started her this year. May 3rd of 2023 on 28 count Lugana and the color wheat with a called for bell swaz. Oh, I know why. Cause she was a restart. I wasn't liking that. I had her on a piece of ale that was very, very dark. And, um, the colors were just kind of, um, drab on her. So I started her on this, just this plain wheat fabric. So I restarted. So that's what, what I got done. I think I just worked on her a day, maybe two. So that was a restart for this one. And I am using the Call for Belsois um, silks by Classic Color Works for her. And this is a bag by Black Cat Stitchery. Has a uh, chocolate covered strawberries. Yum, yum. <laughs> I love chocolate. Uh, Amazon bag, mesh bag. This is Defrotag, 1849 by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. Looks like that. Just showed this one recently because I think this might have been a mania start. This one is on a piece of B Stitch Me fabric, um, 32 count Lugana. In the color coconut shell and I did not get much farther on this one I worked the one day and I don't think I have much time to stitch on it didn't get very far because this was started last year this is one of those pieces that I'm just not drawn to pick up too much evidently so that's how far I am on that one not too 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 far and I'm pretty sure I'm just using the call for on this one. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm using the called for classic color works. They have it either in Gloriana silks or classic color works or DMC. And I switched in glory stars in place of tea and biscuits. One lighter color. Maybe tea and biscuits was too beige and was blending in too much on my darker fabric. So I probably switched that one. And then this one is Jenny Bean by um, uh, Shakespeare's Peddler. Looks like this. It's a uh, Jenny Bean's Friendship Sampler. And I started this one a long time ago and I haven't gotten very far on this one. This one is being stitched on a 16 count piece of Ada in the color Lamb's Wool. And Go ahead and fold this piece of fabric. It's not that big. It's not on a very big piece of fabric. And that's where I am on this one. I'm using the called for DMCs and uh, 16 count Ada in the color lamb's wool for this one. 
So I've got the one house done. There's four houses in this one. I've got the one. I've kind of got this one corner done. And I haven't worked on this one all year. So that's that's pitiful and sad. I'm pretty sure I'm using all the called for D. Nope, I'm using all the called for, but they're the, the overdides for this one. Uh, DMC Black, 310. The rest are all overdides. Yep, yep, yep. And actually, I was thinking of UFOing this, and then I got it out and looked at it, and I thought, no, I like it. I just it doesn't call to me to work on it, but I still like it. I'm going to take a drink real quick. Okay, that's that stack that was over there. So let's move this stack over there. This one I showed to you just recently. This was in my last video because I was working on this one. And this is one that I might still want to work on a little bit more. This is in a um, Lake House Stitch Company bag. It's a um, big bag with a handle, vinyl front. It's one of my patriotic pieces. And this is Let Freedom Ring by Lila Studio. Looks like this. I had started up here uh, last year, I think it was, and I had kind of worked my way down to get down in here. And then this last time I picked it up, I was trying to work on the portico area there, the little breezeway. And so I did that. I haven't done the back stitching that's in that area though. This is on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color Laurel Green. I think I'm, yeah, I'm using the called fours. Let me fold it this way. Well, I might not need to fold it. I don't have a light behind me, so it shouldn't shine through. This is where I am on this piece. So when I came and I worked on it this last time, I filled in this the rest of the way. Still have a flower to put down here and a couple of leaves, but I filled in this. Then I came down and I worked some more on the trees and I did the, the breezeway here and I started putting in some stitches for the main part of the building. So that's where I am on Let Freedom Ring by Leela Studios. Love this piece. So this one's been on my radar to still work on some more, even though I was just working on it. So for some of my patriotic stitching for the summer. But I think I'm going to throw this one aside to um, maybe take with me. On my retreat. Okay, this next one is in a So Much to Love bag. Nice beachy bag. Little beach cabanas. Um, this one is by Plum Street Samplers and it's called Live on Little. I love this. Couldn't wait for it to come out. This was a retreat exclusive piece and you had to wait like a year for her to release it. And as soon as she did, I got it. I am stitching this on, it looks like a piece of Jody fabric from Still City Stitchers, 28 Count Lugana, so it's no name, but it's kind of a mottled, sandy, peachy color, tanny peach-ish, tannishy color. Let's see how the best way to hold this up. And I started down in the bottom. <clears throat> And I got this far on this one. So that's where I am on Live on Little by uh, Plum Street Samplers. So I have um, some of the bottom filled in. I've got the sailboat done. Started filling in the water. Started filling in the house. So, but haven't completed any of those areas. So this is a good one for some fill in because I still have water to fill in. I have some more whales to put down here and fill in. Got to finish filling in that house. And then I have the whole bit that's on top too still to do on this one. Love it. That's where I am on Live on Little. And as I was saying before, Plum Street is one of my favorite designers. Plum Street, Teresa Kogut, I love Kathy Barrick. Oh my goodness. 
so many great designers. So little time to stitch, not enough time, and so many designers. So many things I love to stitch. Thus, that is why I have so many works in progress. Okay, this next one is in a dot dot goose bag, and it's my tropical drinks, my daiquiris and pina coladas and things. So this is one of my summer pieces. Started this one last year when I was at StitchCon, and this one is um, Summer at the Shore by Cottage Garden Samplings. And so I started this one last summer. This one's being uh, stitched on a piece of 16 count country French cafe mocha, Ada. Um, it's not an over dyed, it's, but it's a soft one. And I only need half the fabric. This is where I am. So I've got the, <laughs> I have his feet in, the little seagull's feet, and I have the end of his tail. But I'm missing the rest of the seagull on there. And then there's some uh, starfish and a sailboat with some waves at the top that I still need to stitch in. But I have all of the lighthouse completed, all of the waves down here in this um, um, thing that he's standing on. But I still need to do the seagull and these and the ship up here to, to finish this piece. And I'm using a mix of called for in my own picks. So I was stitching from stash. I do that a lot. Um, sometimes if I'm at, I don't have a very close convenient uh, needle workshop to me. There is the one in Alexandria, but when you're talking Northern Virginia traffic, it's not so close, not so convenient. So I don't get to it very often. So I either, um, if I'm not, um, I go to Salty Yarns when I go to my Ocean City retreat. And so I do get a chance to go there and um, get some in-store shopping. Uh, and then I think I've been to InStitches twice in the last couple of years. Um, otherwise, um, I have a stash of threads for, that I've had or that I um, were in other kit, that, you know, other projects that were dekitted and now I have extra or whatever. And so I stitch from stash because I have a stash. And then this next one is a Plum Street Samplers. I was working on this one not too long ago. This is Liberty's Welcome. That looks like that. Hopefully you're going to be able to see it. Sun's coming out a little bit more. Uh, when I'm sitting here on the couch, I have the windows here, and then I have my overhead light and over there. And so I'm hoping that's giving you good lighting. <clears throat> this one I am stitching on platinum. Uh, this is 32 count platinum Lugana. And I am using a mix of the called for and ones that I picked, pulled from my stash. Oh, I can fold this one in half. I'm only halfway across the top right now. So this is where I am. I just showed this one recently. This was one I was working on not too long ago. It's for some of my patriotic stitching. Liberty's welcome. Love it. I just was watching um, Chrissy, Chrissy Crosshatch Quilts. Um, she just put up her latest video and her beginning video montage for the start of her video shows her patriotic wall. And I just can't stop staring at this one when I see it on her wall. And she has this one up in the summertime. So I think that's what called me to this one was last year in the summertime when she had her patriotic wall on display. I saw it and fell in love, completely in love. This is another patriotic piece. This one is um, a Lake House Stitch Company bag, vinyl fronted. It's got my Twin Peak Primitives, One Nation Under God piece. Started this back on October, August 1st, a couple of years ago. It looks like this is a really big piece. This one was, a, the model I believe was stitched by Chrissy, a finally a farm girl. 
This is on, I started this a while back, so this one is on a piece of Ada. It is, looks like I did a mix of the called for DMCs, no, overdyed DMCs, and um, just a whole mess of different threads. And I am doing it on 16 count beautiful beige Ada. I have not touched this one yet this summer for any of my patriotic stitching. Well, this is where I am. So I started on that banner in the middle. I did a middle start on this one. And the last that I was working on it, I was trying to start working on that big white house. And this is another one where I know I'm like a stitch off over here. And I just flubbed it and made it work. So, so I was looking at this one recently because I was thinking about picking it up and working on it some. And I was trying to debate, do I work a little more on the house down here or do I come over here and try to finish some more on this, uh, these flowers in this, this vase? Uh, because there's still some red flowers and some more leaves. I just had these two blue flowers, but there's still the red leaves. Or work on this lady that's holding up the flag that I stitched in. Options. I have options. But it's beautiful. I love it. The whites are pop popping off of this beautiful beige. Don't have a problem with that. Um, it's gonna be beautiful when it's done one day. Which I know is not gonna be anytime soon because this is a big, beautiful piece. It's gonna take a bit of stitching. Okay, the next one is in a summer bag. Oh, this, I think this is my Shores of Hawk Run Hollow in this bag. Not sure who made this bag. I think it's the same person who made the one red bag I have that doesn't have any insignia on it. I know I purchased it off of Etsy, but not sure who did it. This is Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. My car, uh, carriage house samplings. It's got the name on the back here, on the other side. So I was working in this middle square. I've been working away on that one and that one whew, it's taken a while. So I also recently had picked this up and finished putting all, outlining all of the blocks. I'm doing, I've done that now to all of my hawk runs. I have four of them that are block ones like this. Now that I have all of the blocks stitched in. This is on a piece of 16 count Ada that I coffee and tea dyed myself. And this is where I am. On this piece. So I already had these two blocks on the side done and I came in uh, this past month and I've been working on doing the, the middle block and it counts as block five and six or six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven on this piece. So I was working on the um, sailboat. Still have a lot of sails left to do in that one. I am using all the called for DMCs on this one. So that's where I am. And I put it aside. I'm, I started working on something else. I was working on this while I was watching TV in the other room for the past like couple of weeks. I was working on this for two or three weeks in the evenings. I sit and watch TV with my husband and uh, uh, got quite a bit done because like I said, I got all those squares done and I started working in that middle square, which that's a lot of stitching. I don't have thousands of stitches I've already stitched on that one. This is a go around tote and bag bag. It's my Lincoln and flags and Liberty Bell and Eagle on this fabric and then um, patriotic fabric on the inside. This one is, these are my Plum Street samplers. These are my three. Um, right now I am working on a new constellation. Looks like this. These are all Rhode Island style samplers by Paulette Stewart with Plum Street samplers. But the other two I have in here. 
because when I finish that one, I'm gonna work on one of these. I have the equality sampler in here. So I want these all hanging on the wall together and the heritage sampler. These ha uh, cannot, well, they can be, but it, I wouldn't recommend stitching these on Ada uh, because they have some one over one stitching. They have a bit. So I have two more pieces of sand, Lugan, um, 28 count Lugana by Picture This Plus in this bag because they're sitting there ready for the other two because I want them on matching fabric. I am, I think, believe I'm using all the over called for overdies. And last time I picked this one up a couple of months ago, I got the flag down at the bottom done. So this is where I am on the equality sampler. Is that what this one's called? <laughs> Make sure. A new constellation. That's right, this one's about the, the flag. All about the flag. Because June 14th is flag day. See, and that's some over one stitching. So, and the words up here are over one. There's some over one stitching inside here. So I, I wouldn't recommend trying to do this one on an Ada fabric necessarily. So this one I'm doing on a Lugana for all my Ada stitchers, just FYI. So that's how far I am on this one. I dropped my bag, excuse me. I pick up my, my bag. Let me go back in here. I'm just keeping them all together. I'll finish one, I'll start the next. This next one is in a bag that I made. So now we're getting into some of my fall stitching, it looks like. Well, wait a minute. Let me do another patriotic one. I think this is the last of the patriotic. This is in a bag that was made by my friend Madeline. Love the really pretty royal purple on the inside. This is my One Nation by Bygone Stitches. This is the one that's the flag with all of the states listed on it in the order that they joined the union. It looks like this. Have not stitched on this in a little while. This one I am stitching on um, a piece of Lugana by Seraphim Fabrics in the color Haunted. And I have I'm almost halfway. Whoops, I have a needle minder in the way. Hold on. Pull that off of there. Kind of right in the middle of my stitching. Oh, now I just pulled the thread off of the needle. <laughs> so now there's gonna be a dangly red thread. But there you go. That's where I am on One Nation by Bygone Stitches. Bring it in a little bit closer for you guys to be able to see. I was working on the state of Indiana. And it looks like I stopped. So I did get all of the blue star field gridded in. So I just have to go in and finish filling in all of the, the Quaker star motifs. There's 50 of those for each of the 50 states and the 50 stars in the United States flag. And then we have all of the states. I did Virginia in blue because this is where I live. I wanted to signify that. And this where the, my husband was born in New York State, in New York City. So, and then when we get to my state, I'll, I'm going to do my state in uh, gold also when I was born in. Let me put my, well, I'll keep my needle minder separate. Doesn't need to be on there. And I am using <clears throat> an overdyed silk thread, a, a, a Silks for You thread in, for the color red. I'm using Ecru by DMC for the, the white. And I am using, this is some of my overdyed silk red thread by Silks for You. Let me see if I can figure out where. Oh my goodness. And that is PR126. One, two, six. So there's a little bit of variegation in there. I am using, that's my chart. I am using Victorian Motto Delphinium for the blue and Ecru, DMC Ecru for the, the white color in the piece. And then I picked out a gold color. I think it's Poppy by Victorian Motto for the gold that I'm doing in there. Let me 
piece just for the to signify the two states in gold. So that was my other patriotic piece. Okay, now my fall pieces. So this one's in this bag. And this, oh, actually there's two projects in this one. Um, both Plum Street. I have Plum Street Samplers Oga Stocking. This was one that I started for the Mania. One of my Mania starts this year. So I don't have a whole lot done on this. This is one I'm thinking of taking on my retreat this week, this next week, uh, because all I have are two birds and two leaves, basically, on this one. This is a piece of 32 count Lugana, 28 count Lugana in the color amp. No, that's for the other one. That's not it. This is 32 count Lugana in the color taupe, I believe. So I just started up on the top. So I have two birds and two leaves. I'm up here in this up corner. I'd like to get some more done up in here. Olga stocking. And I'm using all the over oh, called for over dyed threads. So there's uh, Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts. Or some of the called for on this one. So you have to pay attention. The chart will show you where the middle of your design is. So I did a middle top start. Um, but you have to make sure that you are starting where the chart says the middle is because it won't look like it's the middle because the it's, of course, a, a stocking shape. So you have to have enough room off to the side for the foot of your stocking. So this is the first time I'm stitching on a stocking. So I had to be very mindful and make sure that I would, you know, found the middle of my um, piece. And like the middle, like, I think it was like, looked like it was way over here or something. And because you gotta allow for the, the toe of your stocking to still fit on your piece of fabric. And then the other piece I have in here is one that I started with um, my friends, Cindy, Madeline, and Paula. Paula has already finished this one, which does not shock me because Paula is so fast. She's pretty much a monogamous stitcher. Once she starts stitching on something, she just stitches away and gets it done. And this one is by Plum Street. And this one's the one that, that is on 28 count Lugana in the color Amber Waves by Atomic Ranch. And it is Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Samplers show you the chart talking away about it so I got a little bit done on this one on my start on this one back in May after I finished my mania um, at the end of May it was one of the pieces that I picked up and worked a little bit on and that's how far I got so I started in a lower left hand corner and I got all the sunflowers in worked way, way across the fence and worked my way up to the house and this Amber Waves, that's a true color right there. It's kind of a yellowy, a light yellowy, golden yellow color. To go with all the oranges and the browns in the piece, the fall piece. So these are two fall ones I was thinking of taking. I'm taking like, I wanna take a variety, a couple of summertime, oh, that's the, thread that goes on it. I'm going to keep it with it. <laughs> um, this next fall piece is in a So Much to Love bag. My Blackbird bag. And this has my Blackbird Fractor by Plum Street Samplers. This one I started last fall, but I got a start on this right before I was going to start switching over to doing more Christmas winter stitching, so I didn't get very far on this one, but I, I really wanted to get a start on this one because I love it and I uh, want to stitch it. So this is another one I really want to just try to get some stitching on soon. Um, I am using a, a it's from my stash, colors it looks like. I've scribbled all over the, made a copy of the color key, scribbled all over it, added my own colors in. <laughs> so that's a la Vicky. 
This is an Olivicki um, pattern. And I'm stitching this on 28 count Lugana in the color Oatmeal by Fiber on a Whim. And I got a piddly little start on this one. I started in the lower left hand corner and it goes this way. And I got some of the, the gate in <laughs> down at the bottom, some of the, some of the fence. I still don't even have the top. There's like this ornate um, spiky top to the fence that still needs to put in. And I, it's still not even all the way, halfway across. I've just got maybe half of the half of the, the left-hand side of the fence that's under that bird. That's what I've got stitched in so far. So this is another one I want a lot of, I want to get some more progress on really soon. This is definitely going to be on my radar for this fall, if not before. I may throw it over there to maybe take, I don't know. I can't, I'm only going to be gone like four days. I don't need to be taking 15 things, but throw it over there. Why not? Add it to the mix. So the bag I made. Same tutorial. Uh, this is another Plum Street. Started this one last year. I was working on this one last fall. And it's the Gather In. This is one I think last year uh, Christy Cross Hatch Quilts had finished. I'd watched her stitch on it and then she finished it. Loved it, loved it. So I had to start it. And this one I'm stitching on 28 Count Lugana and the color Caramel Macchiato by Fiber on a Whim. And I'm using most of the called for, but I think I've switched in a few. Well, I switched in probably five or six of the colors. I was probably stitching from stash again. I do try to match it as close to what it's pictured as I can. If they have a conversion to DMC, I look on my DMC chart, see what the DMC looks like, uh, which it does look like this had some DMC conversions. Um, this one I actually started for uh, Barb from Lost in Floss, was doing a stitch along in memory of Leanne on August 24th, and it was called Hashtag Leanne's Legacy Cell. Oops, and I got a wad of thread. I probably quit on this <laughs> and left the thread, so I just tucked it in there. So I am. I got the whole front of that house, house barn, whatever it is, done. So, love it. Love, 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 love. And I started a little on the, I was getting the roof line started. And of course I was filling in some grass down here. There's a lot of fill in on this one. This one's a great piece to, I think in fact that's, I think I took it on a retreat and was stitching, filling in a bunch of stitches. But see, I must've had this loose thread, this black and green um, and brown sitting on my stitchy spot. So I just tucked it in there, save it. It goes with this pattern. Sometimes I'm switching. In fact, here's a piece of red. It's probably from one of my patriotic ones. Sitting there, just sitting on the couch. All in its lonesome, lost. Okay, another fall one. Another bag I made. This one is by Autumn Lane Stitchery. It's called Autumn Town. And it looks like this. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry for the glare on these plastic bags, but if I did that also, this thing would be four hours long. All of this is solid stitching except for where the grass is. That is your, your piece of material that you're stitching on. So they call for you to pick a green piece. Um, I think theirs is from Mystic. Apple Harvest by Mountain Air Fabrics is the one they stitch theirs on. But I picked a piece of green uh, 28 count Lagana, 32 count Lagana, just in the color green. Not an over dyed. And I am, I did switch in some colors 
using some of the DMCs and some colors I switched in. And this is how far I am on this one. So this is, if, you, if I hold it back here, this is the true color of green. It's like a light green color. So these colors like in here, that's not gonna get stitched. That'll stay that green color. So I am using some, oh, I did pick up a couple of variegated, um, some of my Be Stitch Me um, silks. I was in her Be Stitch Me Silks of the Month Club uh, last year. And so I did switch in a couple of um, her silks in place of some of the colors for the trees and bushes. So that is this one. I think all of the rest of these are my fall and Halloween. This must have been from my fall and Halloween bin cubicles. Another bag I made. And this one is a Plum Street Samplers and this one is called Sweater Weather. It's one of the ones with the little weenie dogs. This one I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of back stitching maybe. This is on a piece of 16 count uh, fabric in the color Mellow Yellow. I picture this plus and this is how far I am. But the one problem I was having and I said last year is this white pumpkin right here. You cannot hardly see the white stitches. So I was either gonna pick those out and stitch those in a different color, or I'm gonna outline the pumpkin so you can see the pumpkin there. Cause it just looks like all you can see are the little gray, it looks like a little skinny gray pumpkin, you know, gray outline pumpkin. And that's just the middle part of the pumpkin and the stem. There's some white stitches in there you can't even see. But I love this little guy's sweater. Look at him. Oh, he's so cute. Well, that's my sweater weather. My little weenie dogs. I don't have weenie dogs, but I think they're adorable. The next piece is my coffee Quaker. It's in uh, a dot dot goose bag. Inside this bag is coffee material. So I put my Coffee Quaker by Heartstring Samplery in this bag. You can kind of see it. And the pattern looks like this. Oops, a lot of glare, sorry. So it's a Quaker sampler. It says, first I drink the coffee, then I do the things. This one I am stitching on a piece of 20 count linen Ada. Flax Linen Ada. So it's kind of a scratchy stiff Ada. Actually, it feels like it's loosening up a little bit. And I'm using all of the call for threads for this one. And that's where I am. So I have first I the, and some of the quicker motifs. This one's really hard to see. This one is in uh, caramel corn, I think it's called. I think that's the color. So I'm using all of the call for, yeah, caramel corn. That one is one that blends in more. But even on the picture on the front, it's hard to see the caramel corn uh, motif. I think this one's probably done in it also. So I need to work on that some more this fall. I consider this a fall piece for some reason, even though it coffee. I drink coffee year round. It just looks like a fall piece because the colors are very fall. Pull it out and show you. So the colors are, you know, like rusty reds, green, you know, mossy green, browns, golds. So it just kind of reminds me of fall. So it's stuck in with my fall stuff. Hopefully I'm not showing the chart to you guys too much. Shame on me. Okay. Let's see. I think this is another fall one. This isn't a bag I made. It's got bees and flowers. 
so this isn't necessarily a fall bag, but I didn't have another fall bag yet for this one. But this one, this piece doesn't always scream fall to me. It has pumpkins on it, but it doesn't necessarily scream fall. This is by Shannon Christine Designs. It's called Autumn Blessings. And yes, it does have pumpkins on it, but it's very, I don't know, almost looks like summery to me with all of those sunflowers. Kind of like the end of summer, beginning of fall. So I started this one for one of my mania pieces this year. Stitching this on a piece of Mystery Lugana, because this was out of my old stash. I think it was cut off of something else. And I still have a dangly thread. And that's how far I got. I got started on one of the sunflower squares. There's quite a bit of stitching in these. So I stitched on it the one day for Mania, and then I think I picked it up and I stitched on it one more day after Mania, at the end of May. But still didn't get very far on that one. Still got a lot more stitching to do. This next uh, fall piece is by um, uh, Lori Holt, Be In My Bonnet, and it's called Autumn Love. Came out last year, I believe. I think this was a last year, maybe a stitch along? I can't remember. Looks like this. I started up here, I got that square done. <laughs> That's almost about all I got done. I am stitching this on a piece of Ada. It looks like cream, 16 count Ada. And uh, this is where I am. Let me just fold it again here. That's how much I got done. That's it, not very far. So. And I'm using all of the called for DMCs. And I ordered them from Lori Holt with the chart from Fat Quarter Shop and um, this plastic floss drop. And I just put the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, one through 20 on here. There's 19 colors, but they had 20 um, circles. So I'm just matching them up with the colors on the chart. I'm just saying, yeah, like color number one is the first one, two, three, four, five, six, and all on the way down. So these are my threads. Very pretty colors. And, it, and this bag is a coffee bag also. The coffee material in there. Although this is not a coffee pattern. Then this is a, whose bag is this? Little Boat 88. I think she's a Canadian um, bag maker. I think she's still making bags. <clears throat> this is one of my Twin Peak Primitives pieces. And this is what the inside of her bag looks like. It's a vinyl fronted, beautiful fall bag. This is my Twin Peak Primitives, the first Thanksgiving. I love this piece. This is my only Thanksgiving piece I have right now that I'm stitching on. And I am stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada. So I started this back in 2021. Um, I'm using a combination of Weeks Dye Works, Victorian Motto, or Substituted In, blah, blah, blah. 16 count piece of Ada in the color Dirty. Dirty is one of those colors that whites pop off of nicely also. You can see my white in the uh, bunting up here, in the red, white, and blue bunting, how it's popping off of there. So I started upper left hand start, got some of the border in, got the Union Jack, the uh, British flag there. And I started on the Plymouth Plantation, the middle vignette in here. So I am doing a, quite a bit of substitutions um, because some of the colors just didn't look like, didn't look right, um, on the chart. I don't know why, but then it was confusing too, because it, I think this was one that was stitched by, um, Chrissy, finally a farm girl, the model, and she did not use their called for either. So then they have the ones they called for, I think they 
some are often a paragraph to the side. They list some of the colors that she switched in. And so it's kind of confusing as to the, co the colors for this because the model's not stitched with called for colors necessarily completely. I do want to pick this one up, of course, this fall and work on it some more. It's definitely one of my fall pieces. Um, so I have just a, a bunch of colors here right now picked out. I picked out. Some of the called for, some not. I call it Vicky conversion. <laughs> it's like, I do my own thing. Fly by the seat of my pants. I look at my stash and I go, oh, that's a pretty blue. That'll work. That'll match. And I throw it in there. So that orange will go with them. Okay, looks like now I'm maybe down to all of my Halloween pieces. This is a So Much to Love bag. And this one has two pieces in here that I just recently started. I think I started both of these for my mania. This first one is by Tiny Modernist, and this is the Spooky Halloween Bell Pool. And let me see if I find what piece of material that one's on this one. This one's on a 16 count piece of Ada in the color. I think this is Mirage. Do I have the thing? Hmm. Yeah, this one is on, you know, if I was more organized. Yes, Mirage. <clears throat> I picture this plus. And I think I'm using all of the call for DMCs, I believe. And I can fold that in half because I only had that much done. But there I am. So I picked it up. I started it for Mania. And then I worked on it some more, a few days more. Because that's quite a bit of stitching in there to fill in those signs and that hat. That's a lot of stitches. So that's my Spooky Bell Pool by Tiny Modernist. That's my start on that one. And then my other piece in this bag is by Primrose Cottage Stitches. It's called Halloween Letters, and it looks like this. So this is another one I started for Mania this year. I'm stitching this one on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color Brown Sugar by Fiber on a Whim. Pretty sure I'm using the call for colors for this one. And this is how far I got on this one. I got the word haunted in here and I started the haunted house over here. And it's on brown sugar by fiber on a whim. So those two are in here and these are brand new. These are new starts. So I'm hoping to get some more done on them this fall. The next one, so I think all the rest of these are Halloween. <clears throat> They're out of my Halloween bin. This is another So Much to Love bag with the owls, these cute little owls. This one is by Plum Street Samplers and this is Ghoul Tide Welcome. This was another mania start this year. So this is a new start for me for fall. <clears throat> And I started this one on a piece of um, 16 count Ada in the color Ale. If I picture this plus, that's how far I got for my start. I worked on it the one day and I think I picked it up and worked another day or two on it to get some more, get it pushed along a little bit farther. So I am started in that upper left hand corner where these um, pumpkins are, stack of pumpkins. So that's where I am on this one. Oh my goodness, people. It's a good thing I divided this into two videos. It's gonna be a five hour long, epic movie length. Um, this one is another So Much to Love with the Teresa Kogut fabric. So this houses my Teresa Kogut Halloween sampler. This is one she came out with last year. 
Looks like this. I'm doing the main one, the, the sampler in this one. Um, I picked this up and kitted it when I was at Salty Yarns for, and I was out in Ocean City for my retreat. I kitted it up and uh, got the fabric and everything out there. Um, there's a whole bunch of other pieces though in this book. Such cute patterns. Um, so there's more than just that one sampler in here. But I'm doing the sampler right now and I know I love a lot of those other pieces. So I kitted it up and I started it out there, I think last September is probably when I did. This is a piece of 32 count uh, Lugana by Fiber on a Whim in the color Caramel Macchiato. <clears throat> and I'm using all the called for uh, her DMCs and her overdides that Teresa Koga called for. And this is where I got, I got that far. So I started it at my retreat in Ocean City and then I um, worked a little more on it, like another few days. Because believe it or not, that's probably like five days of stitching right there. So I'm just up in that upper left-hand corner. You see how big my piece of fabric is. It's gonna be a good size piece. Actually, I might have had the piece of fabric and I might have just kitted it with the thread and stuff. I don't know. No, I, no, because it's one of their, I bought the fabric there also. Okay. The next one is in a bag I made. So it's got some sparkle to it. And um, this is my um, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And it looks like this. I can't wait to work some more on this one. This one, I've been itching to pick this one back up. I was working at sh on Shores of Hawk Run for a little while though. I said, no, it's summertime. Let me work on Shores because with the ocean theme to it, it just seems more summery to me. And I am, and I'm stitching this one uh, with all the called for DMC and I'm stitching it with um, a piece of 16 count Ada in the color J, J-A-Y. I picture this plus and like I said I gritted in all of my um, hawk runs that have the blocks like this and um, last year when I was working on it the last thing I was working on I did half of this block and half of this big middle block almost I'd already had this block done and I had gritted it all in. So I did a lot of work on this one last fall, even though it doesn't seem like it, but there is a lot of stitching in each and every one of these blocks. And um, Heidi, Stitching Faye, she just finished her Halloween at Hawk Run. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I think that's what's making me also itch to get this one back out and work on it some more. So. I'd like to get that middle block finished and that second block finished this year. You know, that is a lot of stitching. I really want to get um, some good progress on this one. The next one is in a bag I made. And it looks like this. This is, I think this is my prairie schooler. Nope, this is my Blackbird. Um, this is Midnight Watch by Blackbird Designs. And I just recently saw a New Hampshire Stitcher. She finished this one. <clears throat> I love hers. I'm stitching mine on a piece of, it's kind of a grayishy blue color. 16 count Ada in the color Storm by Picture This Plus, which is a grayish blue. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to come in and switch and do it more on a neutral fabric or keep going with this kind of grayish blue fabric. But that's how far I am. I'm not very far on this one. I don't think I worked on this one last fall at all. So maybe I'll get some more work done on this one this year. Cause this was kind of a neutral fabric that it, the original one was done on. So I don't know. 
Douche Noom. I kind of was thinking of looking at my fabric stash that I had and see if there was something else and pick out what I, little I did. It's another bag that I made. And no, I don't sell these bags. They're not sell worthy. Oh, this is one that, oh my gosh, I can't decide on fabric for these. These are my bewitching pixies. And the first one I started with was Gigi. She's the blue one. And um, I just can't decide on a fabric for her. She is driving me nuts. I started out on the called for with 16 count milk chocolate fabric. And I got that far on her in the 16 count milk chocolate. This was the called for fabric. Then I thought, I don't know if I like the called for, it looks kind of plain. So I had this fabric flare piece um, that is just called gray, but it has very mottled gray in it. And I did got that far on her, but I'm not sure if I like, cause it's just so um, splotchy and I don't want it to detract from her. So I don't know if I'm loving this either. So I stopped on her and I didn't work on her at all this past year because um, I'm thinking I have much more uh, fabric options. So I might look through my fabric and find something I really will love for my bewitching pixies. So I'm just not loving either of those. So there's another bag that I made. And this is my Leela Studios Halloween Quaker. Looks like this. Oh, now I got glare coming from everywhere, sorry. And I started up here in the upper left-hand corner. I didn't get very, very far on this one either. This is on a 16 count piece of Ada in the color uh, Mirage. So this one's on Mirage. There was another piece that was on Mirage that I showed. I think the uh, Halloween Bell Pool. And this is how far I am. So I'm not that far. I got this whole motif and I got mm, a good amount of this really big motif here. But that's it. That's only how far I am on this one. Not very far at all. I'm gonna get some more work done on that one. Mm -hmm. When I look at these, I'm like, Vicki, you really do need to concentrate and start whipping down your whips because I have so many lovely pieces that I really, really, really want to work on. And the last two that I'm going to show you today are in this bag. This is one of the larger Garon Toten bag bags. This one has my Bellatrix by Bella Filipina. There's one of them. Let me see if I can find her. Here she is. So she looks like this. She's a beautiful sorceress. And I am stitching her on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color, is that stone? What is that? Um, oh, I don't, I have a question mark. I don't know what color this is. And I am using all the called for DMCs and specialty threads for this lady. And that's how far I am on her. So her arm goes up here and this is a ball of fire that she's holding in her one hand and she's looking out the window. So that's where I am on her. Got a top part of her. But I need to work down in her dress. And then the other one in, in here is Sleepy Hollow by Glendon Place. Looks like this. I am stitching this one actually on the called for. Um, I think it's haunted. What is it? Using all the called for, the DMC, and then there's some metallic, some a Caron water lily. There are beads in this one. But I think this is called haunted. Yes. Um, but they're doing it on a 28 count cashel linen in the color Haunted by Picture This Plus, and I'm doing it on 16 count Ada in Haunted by Picture This Plus. And I got just part of the horse. I did not work on this this past year. Those are all where the page breaks were for this horse. Because I did a middle start on this one, so 
I need to mark, work my way around to finish the horse and rider on that one. And that is it. That is what I'm going to show you today. We're at about two and a half hours. So I need to wrap this up, put away all this mess. And hopefully within the next um, couple of days, because I leave in just a few days to go to my retreat. And then a couple of days after I get back from that, my mom and I leave for our epic trip out west. So um, I am going to try my best to get the second part of this up in the next couple of days, in the next two to three days at the most. And um, because I don't think I'm going to have time after I get back from my retreat to get that done. Because i got to get start getting packed and get things done to um, go on that trip. So I thank you guys if you hung in there this long. I hope it didn't bore you too much. I hope I held up each piece long enough um, that you got a, a decent look at each of my projects. And the next set that I will show you will have um, in my part two whip parade, we'll have my fancy folks, so my Mirabilia, lavender and lace. It looks like my winter, my Christmas, some more samplers, a couple of more hawk runs. What else do I have? And things that I've been working on lately so that I can show you the latest amount, that latest things that I got stitched on since my last um, regular stitching video. And then that way you guys will be all caught up with where I am up to this point. And then when I get back from my um, trips, then I'll be able to um, show you everything that I worked on while I was gone and stuff, which I don't know how much that will be. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, for your continued patronage to my channel. I thank you so much that um, you know, all the kind comments that you leave me. Um, like I said, no judgment zone. I know I have a lot, but I love them and they make me happy. And who am I hurting? Nobody, <laughs> you know? So if um, I have the room for them and I have the time to stitch on them, then, then that's just what I'm gonna do. So um, stay tuned for part two. I will get that out to you hopefully soon. And I hope you guys had a lot of good stitching time or whatever it was you were doing while you were listening to my video. And I wish you guys all the best. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Bye-bye.